uh, and then of course uh, the final mastering stage has more plugins uh, one, one first plugin is uh, slick eqm mastering edition by tokyo downlaps and uh, what this plugin does it just uh, gives the possibility with the smart operations tool gives the possibility to learn the let's say i, I will show you how it works let's say i play the track And they click to learn. So the plugin learns the EQ of the tune. When it says low variance detected, I click stop and I can. De resonate it or I can load a reference track so, for example this one and I can click match reference matches reference or I can match it with gain and width so there are different options, whatever sounds best to you. In this case, I choose just the resonate. I like how it sounds. I click apply. I can excite my low frequencies if I want. Choose uh, the frequency. I can excite my high frequencies. I can uh, choose how much of that plugin I want to be impacting the sound. Like nothing. It goes even to, other, uh, to opposite values. So let's say I leave it at 100% for now. I bypass. Enable. Mm, I like. Okay, that works for me. That's enough. So then I have a very nice plugin which called Bass Room, and uh, it gives the possibility to EQ the low frequencies. Uh, and the low frequencies here are divided in five sections. You can see, you see the frequency frequencies here. So I can move up and down how I want it. So let's say uh, I want. Uh, the bass to sound like in some other track I like. Uh, then I can load a reference file. When I load it, yeah, for example, I select the range, create targets, and Play the track. I might reduce according to the reference. I need to reset the targets. In 
this case I like the settings which uh, I had done the, the reference file didn't give me what I want so I keep it like that it gives me a nice powerful uh, base and warm next plugin is again a plugin from Acoustic Audio. It's called Scarlet 4. It's a mastering uh, equalizer, uh, also based on some legendary EQ. They sampled, and it has a function of artificial intelligence kind of track and offers a choice of uh, EQ. Uh, different engineers have uh, done their presets and uh, you can choose whichever uh, fits you best i like earl holder uh, preset uh, this engineer is uh, a guy who was working on public enemy uh, albums uh, so this uh, preset I like the most and then the CQ works also in mid-side mode so if you disable you have stereo EQ if you enable you have mid and side mode so you can adjust your mids on one side and sides on another it has preamp it has boost of very nice uh, EQ curves and sound uh, for tops and lows, so really suggesting uh, to try this out. Uh, so then I, uh, on this particular track I used uh, the preamp from Gold Free. It's another nice emulation uh, from the Neve console, as far as I know, and. Uh, uh, they have many different preamp choices. I found that, uh, for example, this bus 66 stereo with combination of number five and a little bit of drive gives me a nice warm sound. Yeah, so let's hear with and without. <laughs> Does some some magic, some warmth comes out from the base. The transients uh, kind of glue together a little bit better. It doesn't work always on all material, but sometimes it's very nice. And then again, I have Pensado EQ uh, on the uh, master bus. <coughs> I like to use a stereo bus preset. And then I tweak, usually I tweak the uh, tops, decreasing them a bit, or maybe I can add the low pass filter to smooth the top end a little bit. Uh, preamps uh, also give some nice warmth and width, so very nice too. <laughs> And then at the end, I might also have some clipper, just clipping a little bit of transients out. With somehow a little bit more open, a little bit more clarity. That's what I like. And at the end I have a limiter which I think is one of the best in the world today. Without limiter, same loudness. With limiter, glues everything nicely together. I think, I think how much it's 
heading now, it's heading around 8 dB of gain. Transparent, very nice limiter. Normally suggested. So, and at the end, that's one of the most important tools for me when I master and uh, make decisions on what kind of changes I need to do, why, why, what's wrong, what needs to be fixed. And, uh, it's a metric AB tool, very popular reference tool today. Mm. It has the spectrum analyzer. It has a co correlation meter. Image metering shows the dynamics of the track. Shows loudness and so on. say I have original file, original mix from the artist and I have my master's version and I want to compare. Did I improve? Did I make good decisions and changes or not? So in this case I need to level match the original and the Stems mastered version I did. So I click match, wait a few seconds, and it shows me that original was uh, 0.5 dBs less loud, so it uh, applied the gain. So now we can switch and decide was my mix improving the, the sound or not. In this case, I hear improvements. Mm, the drums became punchier, tighter. 